Okay, so um, as we're painting, we've got our acrylic paint set up. These are just from the little pump uh, type paints, but that's just set on your paper towel that's all wet. We've got a piece of tracing paper that this is what we're going to be blending with. This is, this is where our palette, where we're going to mix colors, if we need to mix. We're going to do this kind of uh, impressionistic, where we're going to use pure colors, lay them down. We're going to use water, and we're just going to go as fast as we can and do as much as we can. And we've got our little scene here, our little um, elephants. I may want to move those elephants over a little bit. And so you, you don't have to, I mean, your, your picture is a reference. You're not stuck with your picture. And so right now what we want to do is just do a little bit of drawing, like my little elephants. I'm going to put them off to my right, give them a little bit more space, and maybe even take that sun and put it over just a little bit so that they're not walking past the sun, but towards it. Okay. For example, I'm going to put mine on the leftish side. There's the sun over here. So my elephants are going to be in this little area here. And I'm just I'm just going to block them in. There's not I'm not really concerned that it's exactly perfect. There's my elephants. Everything else, I mean, if you if you wanted trees and stuff, but the clouds, nobody cares if they're in exactly the same place, um, or even if they look exactly the same way. You're using this picture as inspiration only. And we always paint back to forward. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to paint um, our sunset. We want it really light and we want it soft. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take water in that big old brush that you first got and I'm just going to lay some water down in there. Now the gesso that's on there, it'll, it water doesn't stick to the gesso. Nothing sticks to the gesso except paint. But that water is going to keep my colors from going too far. I'm going to take some orange Lay that into it and notice that it, it fuzzes out like a watercolor. Look at that already. That's kind of neat. And you just kind of lay it in there. Let it fuzz out. Let it do its thing. Lay that in there. Let it fuzz. It's going to dry very quick. If you're somewhere else in the world and you have a lot of moisture in the air, may not dry that quick. So just kind of lay that that out, that orange. Hopefully most of my, my pigment is gone, but if it isn't, just dry it off on your brush. A lot of that pigment comes, or on your uh, paper towel, a lot of that pigment comes off on there. Now I'm going to touch a little bit of the yellow, just a little of yellow, and I want that sun to be right over here. So I'm going to just go over that. And I'm just going to do these little, little shapes with that yellow. As quick as I can. I still want some of that nice texture, that soft, fuzzy texture. I want to keep that going. You can, uh, you can water paint on, on this gesso board. Your water paints will never be permanent. That's the cool thing about this. So my sun is right here. This is where I want my sun to be. I'm just going to take my brush and kind of take out some of that. You can even take your paper towel if you want, and lay it into it, and just give it a twist. There's my sun. And I'm going to soften the edges a little bit of that because I don't want it. I don't want it just a big circle. But if you think, well, I, I really want it lighter around the sun, you can take your paper towel and, and get rid of some of that.
and it's all kind of about water management. You know, it's like it's like almost like a watercolor at this point. Once it dries, it's permanent. It's there forever. So there's my sun. Now I can come back into it with, with a little bit of the white too, but I want some of these purpley clouds in there too. So I'm going to do the same thing up at the top. I'm going to start out with some water. Just put that up in there. Now I've got a little bit of yellow on my brush. Is that going to affect my purple? Yes. What's going to happen to it? Yeah. Because yellow and, and purple are complementary colors, the yellow is going to counteract the purple, so it's not going to be quite so bright purple. But now I want to lay that purple in there as fast as I can. Here's my clouds. I'm just going to lay that in and, and let, the, let the fuzz out, let it, let it do its thing. And you, just, you, you don't have to go everywhere, just here and there, wherever you feel like you need it. Now, this is a very translucent way of painting. You can just lay the paint in by itself and it becomes a little more opaque. Maybe you want a little bit of blue in there. I'm gonna have to get some blue up in there. Now the blue is gonna act with the yellow and turn a little bit green, but your skies usually are a little green anyway. I'm just going to lay a little bit of blue in there. And I, I got to paint fairly quick because it's going to dry up. Remember, we're not we're not being exact for this guy, we're just using it as a guide, a pirate's code, it's a guideline. You can bring that in to the, the orange, you can make a little cloud down in there. Orange and blue are complementary colors, so it's going to counteract that. But when it's dry, you can always go back over it with some other color and make it brighter. Purple clouds and the sunset. There's our sunset. Isn't that beautiful? It's just, it's just pretty. That is our basics. We can always come back into it with more, okay? Just, just remember that. If you got too much paint in there, take your brush, dry your brush off and touch it, or take your rag and touch it. You can even take your finger if you want, scumble it a little bit. It's up to you. That's not my favorite way to do it, but. You can also even have two brushes if you want and paint with one and then take the other one and scumble the edges a little bit just to soften them. So while I'm here, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go down and do the grass too. In the background um, I want that basic and then that's going to give this all time to dry so that I can come back into it and I can do a little bit of light around the clouds that silver lining the little white edges and you know add a little bit more darkness here and there but we're just going to layer in our colors and so now I'm going to do the bottom I'm going to do the bottom the same way I did the top all my background is going to be light So 
So there's some, some water on there. So I had all these little goobers on this piece that somebody spilled paint on. I'm going to use that as bushes. That's the technical word for those goobers. Okay, just so you know. A little blue in the background, maybe a little bit of purple in there too, just a little bit. Just nice and soft and light. Notice I went through my elephants because that's between their legs and I don't want to have to paint between their legs, you know. My elephants are still there, but I kind of painted through them. Here's my grass. About the same color as my sky. Maybe I'm going to mute it a little bit. You can add a little bit of white to that. Mute it up a little bit. That also gives me, I, I don't like to see the white of the canvas show through. And so this is kind of, I guess if you call it an underpainting. Now, here's my grass. I'm just going to take my brush just do these little there's some texture for the grass and because it's wet it will dry a little differently than you do but just keep it fresh if you want some brown what are you going to do to get brown so here's some brown i've just taken my red and my green I just kind of I just kind of took my brush like this, pulled it down, and then mixed it. And all of a sudden you get brown. So there's my brown. So now I'm gonna go in. Here's some trees, or trees, bushes, grass. There's that brown kind of stuff that's down in there. Because it's wet, you're going to get that kind of odd texture going on until it dries. This is that wet on wet texture. So that's my basic texture and I can keep doing that and as I do it's going to dry and as it dries it's going to get a little different texture. Like I say, you, you're, you're going to want to try some different things with it. But notice how your paint is still very wet that's on your paper towel. Now, this part up here is pretty dry. I can go back into that and, uh, and paint away with that. You can use your large brush still. Use the side of it if you want. Or you can switch into a brush that's a little smaller. It's up to you. I think I'm going to switch into a little smaller brush. There's some larger purple clouds. Add a little bit of blue here and there maybe. And I've just dipped into the white. I, I cleaned off as much paint off of my brush as I could. I haven't been really cleaning my brush in my water. I'm trying to get rid of all the paint I can. 
Now I'm going to go over some of those edges with white. Just here and there. And that, that also will help soften those edges a little bit. And keep it kind of uh, soft as much as you can. Always layer in more color. As it dries, your, your paints become a little sharper, a little more contrast. When you're finally ready to clean your brush, dip it in your water and then clean it on your paper towel. Now that it's dry enough, I can take my white and do those edges. There's a little bit of yellow in my brush, so I'm getting a little light yellow in with my edges, which is okay. Just layer those in. Go from your sun too, and you can like go from your sun out and put, take your white, do your sun, and then do a few little light clouds floating by happy little clouds. Hurry, your happy little clouds. Are you coming along? Cool thing about acrylics is you can always go over the top of them. You can add more to it. Remember, it's kind of a feeling thing. You, you kind of go through it and you go, eh, I feel like it needs to be right here. And it's impressionistic. So whatever you're impressed with, the colors, the textures, remember all those unsightly little goobers on my paper? Pretty much got most of them taken care of, at least in the sky. Cool thing too is when you're practicing like this and if you don't have a lot of money, you can just paint over and over and over on the same painting. I was uh, in the Art Institute of Chicago few years back, I was looking at a Picasso. It's this little blue man that's kind of playing a guitar or something. Anyway, I, I was looking at the paint strokes and I thought, there's something underneath there. So I got down on the floor and if you looked up on it, you can see his painting in the, the paint before and there's a woman there underneath there. Anyway, just kind of interesting. 
ever have the opportunity to go to the Art Institute of Chicago, please do. It's not cheap to get in, but you can stay there all day long and still never see everything. It is huge. They have a one wing of just armor too. It's really cool. Every now and then, get your brush wet. Because if you don't, then the paint starts to stick in your bristles and it makes it hard to paint. Remember, we're kind of impressionistic, so you just layer in your colors and forget about it. If it's not exactly what you want, that's okay. Sometimes you're not really sure what you want. So you just go ahead and layer them in anyway, and somewhere along the way, hopefully it'll turn out. If it doesn't, that's okay too. It's all about the experience. Well, there's still a lot more that I'd like to do uh, in the sky, but I want to get to those little elephants. They're they're begging, begging to be gotten to. And what color are they? Kind of kind of brownish. Yeah. So if I take a little bit of red and green and mix them together, that'll give me a little bit of brown, and maybe just a tiny bit of yellow with that just to warm it up. I'm going to get a nice kind of gray tone. I'm just going to kind of keep mixing until I've got kind of the color I want. There we go. Got a nice kind of kind of brownish. I haven't really used black up to this point, but I think I'm gonna take a little black and mix it in with that red and green. Give me a little stronger contrast. I want it too dark.
I had to do something with this, this goober down here, so I'm going to make it into a little bush. This is red and green and purple, by the way. Purple just adds a little coolness to it, maybe a little more contrast as well. And if you add a little bit of, of yellow to that, you'll get this kind of golden tan color. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully somewhere along the way it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better. <laughs>